What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Comic History where we go over iconic origins and storylines for all sorts of comic characters and series. In this video we're going to be talking about Jessica Jones vs. Purple Man aka Zebediah Kilgrave which ties heavily into the upcoming Netflix TV series and occurs in Alias aka Jessica Jones issues 24 to 28 and wraps up the Alias series on a very strong note. This arc is probably Jessica Jones' most famous storyline in the comics, and it's no surprise they want to touch on this for the Netflix series. If you're interested in Jessica Jones or are going to watch the show, definitely check out my Comic History Origin of Jessica Jones video for her complete origin and how she got her powers. The Alias series takes place after Jessica Jones was a costume superhero, but her time as bright young female superhero Jewel is when she first gets involved with the Purple Man. At this point, Jessica Jones doesn't have a care in the world past getting a boyfriend in the city and is living the idealized life of a superhero when she notices a commotion at a nearby restaurant. Walking into the situation, she finds two men fighting to the death for the amusement of a man with purple skin and a relaxed smile. He tells her to come in and sit down, and she finds that she is unable to resist any command he gives her. Kilgrave's powers work by proximity. Anyone who gets close to him breathes in the pheromones his body gives off, which, mixed with the chemicals that altered his skin color and gave him his powers, give him the ability to completely dominate his victim's wills, and he is able to fully control their actions. One of the first things he says to Jessica is, take off your clothes, and horrified, she starts to do it. But Purple Man notices the police gathered outside and sends her out to deal with them, using the full force of her superpowers to fight them off. Deciding to keep Jessica as his personal superpowered slave, he controls her mind for eight full months, never actually touching her but making her watch as he forced girls to have sex with him and for him, making her beg him to fuck her, making her wash him and sleep at his feet like a dog, eight full months of psychological torture at the hands of Purple Man, his reasoning for every beating Daredevil had given him, for every time Spider-Man stopped him, he just wanted to make her suffer and beg. Kilgrave spent so much time in her head that she could no longer distinguish between him commanding her to do things and wanting to do them herself. One day Purple Man is reading the newspaper, and on reading the headline that Daredevil saves the the city, he loses it, ranting on about how much he hates Daredevil, and then tells Jessica to put on her costume, fly to the Avengers Mansion, or the Baxter Building, or wherever Daredevil is, and shove a metal pipe up his ass, and to kill any costume superhero she sees on the way, and then to never come back. Jessica blindly flies off to obey his commands, and even though as she gets further from him, she starts to come out of the mind control, he had been in her head for so long that she still can't stop what she's doing, even as her mind and body fight to not do it. She flies straight to Avengers Mansion to find Daredevil. Daredevil, even while knowing herself that Daredevil was not an Avenger and didn't ever hang out there, and unable to stop herself comes in fast and punches Scarlet Witch in the back of the head. First off, this is a chick who can and has destroyed all of reality, not to mention is an Avenger, and at that moment Jessica finally snaps out of it, with the entire team of Avengers and Defenders crowded around what looks like a villain taking a shot at Wanda, and they go into complete gang mode, lunging after her to defend their own, Vision with tears in his eyes because he's married to Wanda. Jessica Jones flies away as fast as she can, but is quickly caught by Thor who swings his hammer at her. She manages to barely dodge and is immediately hit by Iron Man and Vision as they beat her into a literal coma. Things might have been worse if it weren't for the only Avenger who knew her, Carol Danvers, flying in and saving her just in time. But her spine, neck, and just about everything else was broken, her retina detached, and she finds herself in an idyllic dream within her coma. And Jean Grey approaches her within her mind to help her out of it and move into the next phase of her life. With Jean's help, Jessica comes out of the coma and finds herself surrounded by Avengers in a SHIELD military hospital, and proceeds to go through months of physical and psychological therapy. When she's ready to be released, the Avengers all wait for her and give a form formal apology before Nick Fury offers her a job as the S.H.I.E.L.D. liaison to the Avengers, receive S.H.I.E.L.D. training and act as an auxiliary Avenger if needed. Jessica is offended at the notion of a payoff and turns down the offer stating that she's done with the costume superhero life, she's not good enough and she's giving up. This leads into Jessica Jones' life as a private investigator, which is where we get introduced to her in Alias. In present times, Jessica is contacted by a woman representing a group of people who were either victims of Purple Man or the family and loved ones of his victims. They were referred to Jessica by Carol Carol Danvers because although Kilgrave was locked away in the super prison, The Raft, he only admitted to a certain number of crimes proudly wanting to take credit, while flat out refusing to admit to others, leaving this large group of people without even the closure of the man who killed their friends and family admitting to doing it. Jessica meets with them and agrees to try to get Kilgrave to admit to the crimes, knowing firsthand the kind of torturous despair he leaves his victims with. Jessica uses her connection to S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Clay to gain access to Purple Man, who is held in a solitary cell in the raft alongside other incredibly dangerous villains like Carnage, and when she approaches the monitor that allows her to speak with him, he simply says, Jessica Jones my favorite comic book character. 
Things then get very meta with Purple Man as he breaks the fourth wall and reading out the very panels that they exist in, detailing her innermost thoughts and emotions while narrating the panel swaps and angle choices, which within the story itself can just be considered a sign of his insanity and a ploy to terrify Jessica and get under her skin. It's a very poignant moment though and makes you wonder where this book is going. He continues his comic book framing device and talks about how the Alias series has sexual moments and dirty dark parts of her life shown to an audience, talking about how ridiculous it is that a nothing like Jessica Jones would suddenly be the center of everything, and all the time Jessica is yelling at him to admit to killing those people, to say their names so that the families can have closure, and Purple Man just keeps on, telling her that in the back of the book something horrible will happen to her, and that she's just a whore for ratings. Jessica leaves crying and more than a little traumatized. She returns to the families to tell them the bad news and sees that the raft is now a war zone. The prison has broken open and Purple Man has escaped. Jessica hides in an alleyway outside of her apartment, too scared to enter, leaving a voicemail for Carol Danvers who is no doubt out in the field and unable to answer. He calls her mom and tells her to go out of town knowing that Kilgrave will go after anyone and everyone he can get to to get to her and torture her. She realizes that she can't trust anyone. When her friend in S.H.I.E.L.D. tries to locate her, she knows that Purple Man could be using him like a puppet to find her, driving Jessica into paranoia and terror. Not knowing where else to go, she goes to her sort of boyfriend Scott Lang, aka Ant-Man's apartment, and spends the night there. She wakes up the next morning swatting ants out of the bed and turns over to see the dead, bled out corpse of Scott Lang, murdered and covered in the ants he once commanded. While she's freaking out over the death of Ant-Man, Purple Man is calmly sitting across the room talking to himself about Jessica's Comic, ruminating over the artwork and saying he'd seen worse. Hell, he'd been in worse. She yells at him that he killed Scott, and with a cheers and a big smile, he says, well, I am the bad guy. He then reveals that he only forced her to see Scott laying dead. His power is to completely control others, and if he wants them to see something, he just has to ask them to see it. In reality, Scott Lang is laying quietly on the bed like Kilgrave asked him to, and after making him look at him like he looks at Jessica, and making her see Carol Danvers in bed with both Ant-Man and Luke Cage, who she regularly hooked up with. He then forces Jessica to stop crying and takes her out with him to witness his big finale, walking into a busy street and telling everyone to kill the person on their left, instantly causing mass chaos. With the blatant murder all around her, Jessica then sees a vision of Jean Grey, who years ago had left a mental block in her mind to allow her to resist the control of Purple Man if she ever ran into him again. Purple Man wanted to get the attention of the big name superheroes, which is how he was caught originally, leaving Jessica to forever doubt and hate herself for not being the one to take him down. Jessica listens to Kilgrave tell her to go up and kill Captain America, again yelling at her and calling her a whore, and Jessica rears back and cracks him in the face with her super strength, knocking him out cold and then throwing him into a newspaper stand. Carol gives her a hug and Jessica cries tears of joy, knowing that she had beaten Purple Man and would never have to fear him again. Ant-Man later meets up with Jessica and tells her that Purple Man wasn't the cause of the breakout at the raft, it was carnage destroying the security system, meaning that it was just dumb luck that she had seen Kilgrave earlier that day. She then tells him that she's pregnant and then that it's not his. You are not the father, Ant-Man, and he simply walks off saying, bye Jessica. She then goes and meets up with Luke Cage, who ends up telling her that he's grown to like her a lot and care about her, and then she tells him she's pregnant with his kid. Luke Cage turns out to be completely okay with that, and they decide to see where things go, opening up a new chapter in Jessica Jones' life, just as the Alias series draws to a conclusion. So that wraps up Jessica Jones vs. Purple Man, the last arc in the Alias aka Jessica Jones series, and a pretty great story. Jessica Jones represents the transition of comics into more adult material, and the Marvel Max imprint was a great thing for its time, when comics were heavily censored by the Comics Code of Authority. Books like Alias helped comics move out of the G-rated only area, and Jessica Jones is a great character who came out of this time. If you like this video, make sure to thumbs up and subscribe, help us out by donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash rnsentertainment, and check out the other comic history videos for all sorts of great origins and storylines. This is Roman from RNS Entertainment, and I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you guys...